This is the assembly video for the A1 block. For some of you, this may be the first video that you're watching. Um, I do have general information in my uh, Pools Piecing YouTube channel that can explain basting and applique and all these different techniques in a little bit more detail if you're interested. And so I'm not going to go into a lot of the details of that. I'm just going to glance over it. And if you have any questions, you can either ask me on the Facebook page of Dear Jane Ghost EPP or um, look at one of the other technique videos. So what we have here is we have four rows of blocks, essentially. And that's how we're going to assemble it. So we're going to we're going to do this, base these and assemble these, you know, and we're going to form all of these squares before we put them in a row and then we put the rows together. So that breaks it down into a real simple situation. And I've got my block laid out here. And so what I'm gonna do is my basting techniques for this, for the squares I always do opposite sides and then opposite sides again so that way that they lay as flat as possible. If you go around in a circle, you tend to get a little bit of buildup on the corners, but that's a personal personal preference. So if you wanna do that, that's completely fine. For triangles, what I try to do is I try to base them with the tags going in a way that's not gonna be on top of other tags. For example, if I put this one, if I base this triangle first and then I base the legs, the tags that are over the edge will come to the center here. If I do the same thing on this one, where I do this first and then the legs, then it's going to clash with these. So I do try the best I can to make sure that they nest into each other. So in, for example, if I did this first and then the legs and with the tags facing this way, I could do the legs first and then this and then the tags face this way. So when there's a square, I could put tags that direction or whatever. And there are some limited situations. But for example, like for these, I might, um, I might do the hypotenuse last so the tags go away but I don't know, it would be easier to probably go to the center, but we'll see how it goes. I may try different techniques for this video, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first baste all of the pieces for one row, and then we'll get to the assembly section and sewing them together. So I've got my pieces basted for the bottom row and um, I have this one with the, the tags going away and then I've got these opposing so I've got this I basted the hypotenuse last and this one I did it the first and the same kind of thing now when I made my first quilt I used one neutral colored thread um, in this case I'm going to try something a little different whenever there's a color I'm going to have thread that matches that color. So when there's a yellow and black seam, I'm going to sew, I'm going to sew it together with the yellow. And then I have black thread for when it's black on black. So I'm going to go ahead and make the squares. You can do what you wish, but I wanted to explain that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting the squares together so then I can make the row. So I've assembled my squares. So now I'm going to take these and put it together in a row. So I've assembled my row on the bottom row, and that's what we got here so far. So I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to go to the next row up, or down, however you want to do it, and I'll base these similar to this, and then we'll do the squares also. So I've got my pieces for the next row basted and I double checked my layout. I'm looking at my box here. So I got color, 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 square. So I wanna make sure I don't mix them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these into squares and then I can make it into a row. So I got the blocks assembled for the next row. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach those together. So I've got the second row assembled and I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the first row so I don't mix up my rows and lose the orientation of the block. I know I said that I was going to put these two rows together, however, 
when I taped them together to look at them and I looked at the other side, I realized that I didn't like the way that the yellow thread was showing. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. So the yellow thread to me looks makes it kind of look like a messy line. So I did the next row with black thread and I think it's a lot cleaner. So I'm gonna undo these and put them with the black and then what's gonna happen is I'll use in other blocks if I have colors touching each other, like if this was a thing, I'll use the yellow there. But this is why I experiment. So if, if you have a similar situation, I would test it out and see what you like, but I'm gonna take these apart and fix them and then I can put all three of these together. So I changed the thread on these two rows. So now I think it's a little better personally. So you can see that a little better, maybe. So now I'm gonna sew those three rows together before doing the fourth. All right, so I'm attaching the rows together. And for those of you who haven't made a block or seen any other videos, what I'm doing is I'm starting here at the edge and I'm forcing this in alignment, okay? So even though it's not exactly, I'm going to force this edge to be straight. And then as I go along, I'm gonna force these to intersect where they're supposed to. So I, what I've done is I've stitched to about here, and when I, get, when I did get to this intersection in the back, I took a stitch right here on this side of the seam, and then I did an X and that pulls all of that stuff together to make that intersection tighter, which helps with your points. So that will help give you a sharper point here. So then I tied off, and that's because I wanna go over here and force this edge, which isn't quite lined up yet, I'm gonna force this to be straight, and then I can work my way back in. What that does is it will accept or it will suck up some of the excess because as you add fabric between these seams, it will tend to grow. And that's a normal thing. But in order to fight back with that, you gotta do this with the, with the growth. When you get to A9, you will definitely see the growth effect and we'll cover that when we get there, but it's okay and we're gonna fix that. But for this one, there's a little bit of that just because this is not a cut piece of paper and these are. So once you can kind of see that this isn't quite lined up, but when I get there, I'm gonna force the issue and put that intersection exactly where it needs to be. So let me finish up with this row. All right, so I've put three of the four rows together. I still have to even make the first row, but I wanted to mention this. When I was putting this row on, this third row on, this is the absolute center of the block, and you can see it's not exactly perfect. But once I get the papers out, it will settle in a little bit better, but um, it was way off, and so what I had to do is I had to take the stitching out from this whole center part. So I lined up this, and I lined up that, but I, this I had to take out because I had to start by lining this up. But I wasn't able to do an X stitch because there's all this fabric back here. But because I basted all of these the same way, like the, the tags on the yellow are going this way and the tags on the black are going this way, what happens is this is all going in the same direction, so it should pinwheel down and you can feel this and you can kind of see it where it will it will go around in one direction and this in this situation it's going clockwise but that's the benefit in this situation of basing them all the same way so they nest into each other and so when you quilt it that should lay down a lot better not have this big wad but um it's not exactly perfect but i'm going to call that close enough because again once you take the papers out it'll all chill out um, so now I'm going to uh, do this row up here, baste, and baste these so I can put these together in the squares, 
and do the same thing as I did for the other three rows. All right, so I've basted, unattached all of these squares, and then I attached the squares into a row as I did the other three. So now I'm going to attach this final row to the center section. So I've attached the fourth row, and so now my A1 block has been completed. One thing I wanted to point out compared to the book. In the book versus this, you will notice that it is a mirror image of the picture. That is because when we laid it out, we laid it out like this. And so when you flip it over, you're going to get a mirror image. If this bothers you, then you should flip them over and then lay them out from the front side. But if you do a mirror image and you lay them all out the same way throughout the entire quilt, everything will be a mirror image and it won't notice, be noticeable at all. So I just wanted to touch base with that. The other thing I'm going to do is before I put this, I'm going to put this in a baggie so that I have it labeled and protected and ready to go. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to attach my sashings and cornerstones so that I don't have to do it later. And in this case, because it's the A row, you got a couple of choices, but you got to put the top row on this. So I'm going to have four cornerstones and then all four sashings. So you're going to completely surround this block. This is the only block that you're going to completely surround because as you go along, you're going to then attach one here. So for the A row, when I do my sashings and cornerstones, I'm going to do all four on this one, but the next one, because this one's already going to be here, the next one will be top, right, and bottom. And so that will be the theme for the whole rest of the A row. When I get to the B row to the M row, because I'm going to be adding them underneath this row, I won't need to add this one because I'm going to put the bottom section on each one. And so then when I do the B for the first block and the last block, I'm going to do the left, the bottom, and the right. And then I'm going to do right bottom, right bottom across the rest of it. So most of the blocks in this quilt, there's 169 blocks in the quilt, when I do this in the row, blocks 2 through 13 from B to M will only have a left and a bottom. The A row is going to have a left, a bottom, and a top, and all of the ones is going to have the left on there. So you're going to have a right, a bottom, and a top. I think I said that wrong, but you get what I'm trying to say. So whatever way you want to do the cornerstones and the sashings, I would suggest making a plan during the A row so that as you go along, you don't have all of these hundreds of sashings and cornerstones to do at the end. So whatever you want to do, make a plan and then kind of execute it as you go. So I'm going to, before I put this away in my bag, I will put the cornerstones and sashings on this. I'm going to be done with this block assembly video at this point and we will move on to the next block in the next video.